welcome to Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, a.k.a. The Well. We're about to begin our virtual worship service. We ask that you join in, get your Bibles, your tablets, I mean, whatever you need to make this a joyous and worship experience. We're about to begin our service. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Trey, and I just want to check in early on in the service as we get ready to start worship. I'm so grateful uh, and, and want you to know that we are grateful that you tuned in with us today. Uh, of course, we know that, that there are so many churches you could tune into. They're literally at your fingertips, but thank you for spending this time. We're here with us at the well. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want to say this to our well family members. We're getting ready, as I told you a few weeks ago, that we're preparing, making ready uh, to return back to in-person worship in the fall. We're looking at August or September of this year, uh, trying to... Uh, trying to go ahead and plan that uh, because you know everything that we do uh, is in excellence. So we want to plan out uh, at least 90 days in the head. Of course, we know the president uh, has a a date that he has set that he wants to open the nation up uh, in around the 4th of July. And so we want to return maybe 30 to 40 days after that uh, and want to do that, but want to do it safely. And so one of the ways we're going to do uh, our reentry plan requires for us to survey you, to find out where you may be, because some uh, may be eager, ready to come back to church now if we open the doors, and others may not be so eager. But we want to hear from you, want to know from you as we are planning. Uh, we don't want to plan anything without uh, considering uh, you all and at least uh, what you all feel and where you all may be. Uh, and so we want to do that, brothers and sisters. So we have a survey that was passed out on the first Sunday of May. Uh, a lot of you, thank you all for those of you that already filled it out the one time that we need you to fill it out. And there are others who didn't get a chance to make it because of weather concerns. Uh, we're going we're to have a link uh, that's made available for you uh, during this live chat. You can just click on that link, fill it out. It will also be posted throughout the week on our Facebook page as well. Also, you can wait until the next time we do our drive-in. We'll be handing those out, but we're asking this one thing. Once you fill it out one time, just fill it out that one time so that we're not duplicating results because we're trying to gauge where you are so that we can adequately plan so that we can serve you better. I can't wait to hear from you, brothers and sisters. There's only three questions on there asking you whether or not you're feeling comfortable about doing so, and then the other two questions Uh, considering because, brothers and sisters, because of the size of our church, about 300 or so members, maybe more than that, uh, but we've had upwards of 250 people in our sanctuary at one time, and we're not going to be able to accommodate that large of a crowd due to health concerns, and so we're going to have to split that, and if so many people want to come back, we're going to possibly have to move to two services just so that we can keep the crowd smaller so we can keep everybody safe. And so we want to hear from you even about that so that we can understand where you are so we can plan adequately because we believe in doing everything in excellence. Listen, family, thank you for your time. Let's have church. Good morning, Aimwell. We'd like to welcome you this morning to Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, a.k.a. The Well where Pastor Trayvon Wolford is our pastor. And we want you to just come on and and praise God wherever you are, whether you're at home on your couch, on your job, or in the car. God is everywhere, and we're going to praise him because he's a great big God. Come on and praise him with us this morning. How many of you know you're going to make it? (laughs) Put your hands in the air and say, I'm gonna make it. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I was lost without a friend. And then I met Jesus, and he took me in. In light of your temptation, he'll keep the faith. He's already planned a way for you to escape. Listen 
it is. See through your troubles and through your pain, you better believe. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to make it anyhow. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we prepare ourselves for our prayer, we just want you to get anything out of your mind that's not like Jesus and concentrate on his sweet, sweet spirit this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. Help us Usher into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Oh, Lord, we love you. We praise you in this place. Have your way, Lord. Oh, everybody sing. Sweet, sweet spirit. Holy spirit. Sweet heavenly dove. to fill us with your love and all, all. we lift our hearts with so much praise so much praise without a
Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a sweet Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just move deeper into his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, stay right here with us. Hallelujah. Stay right here with us. Sup with us. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Thank you for your word says that you'll never leave us. Neither will you forsake us. Thank you for the comforter that you send. Hallelujah to help us, God, in the times of our need. Lord, we just bless your name this morning. Thank you right now, God, for our early rising on this morning. Thank you, God, that you let us, allowed us to lay our heads down on last night. Lord, we just give your name praise. Lord, we give your name glory just because of who you are. Because of who you are today, we give you glory. Lord, because of who you are, we give you praise. You are the El Shaddai, the great God, the great I am that I am. Hallelujah. The Lord that he lives thee, you are, you are. Hallelujah. God, we just praise you for being everything that we need on this morning. Lord God, for you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provided, the Lord that meeteth our needs, the Lord that maketh ways, the Lord that openeth doors. And God, we just want to say thank you on this morning. Hallelujah. We just want to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. If you don't do another thing else, God, we thank you because you've done enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've done enough already. God, we just thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for our health. God, we thank you for strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For you didn't have to do it, but you did. God, we just thank you. We just reminding you of your word today, God. So for you, your word says that we should put you in remembrance of your word. So we just reminding you of your word and who you are and how great you are to us. Lord God, we ask God that you lead us this morning. Guide us this morning. Lord, we ask God that you bless this house. Bless all of the listeners. Bless our pastor, God, as he prepare and bring forth the word on today. Lord God, we ask that you bless this music ministry as a whole. In the name of Jesus, bless every sinner woman, sinner boy, sinner girl. God, let them, let them come running unto you, needing to know what must I do to be saved. What must I do to be delivered? What must I do to be made whole? Oh God, those loved ones, oh God, that are running around, God, without hope. Hallelujah, God, we just praise you this morning. God, that you cover them and keep them, oh God. Give them a mind, God, to know that they need you. Hallelujah, and beside thee there is no other. And Lord, we just lift you up right now in the name of Jesus. Hey. Glory to God, make every crooked road straight, oh God. Hallelujah, exalt every valley. He, glory, exalt every valley. Hallelujah, every hill and every mountain be made low. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, oh God. Hallelujah for your hand. Hallelujah, that's not so sure that you couldn't reach down and say, Lord, we just praise you right now. Give your name the glory in Jesus' name. Build us up, God, where we're weak. Help us, God, where we've been torn down in the name of Jesus. And, God, we just love you. We love you today. We praise your name in Jesus' name. God, even touch those things, God, that we cannot make mention of. We can't speak them out openly, oh, God. But, oh, God, you know the secret desires. Oh, Hada. You know the secret desires of the heart. Be touch now. Deliver now. Make whole now. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. For God, your word said that you sent your words and your word healed them. Lord God, we're sending your word even right now. In Jesus' name. And we thank you and we call it done. Thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, Lord. 
when we shall leave this place. Open your mouth, sweet, sweet spirit. Hallelujah. Sweet heavenly Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the Bible said that there is a friend that stick closer than a brother. Abraham said that he called me friend. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God so much until it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And then God said that he's my friend. Hallelujah. He called him friend. So if he don't do it, I know that he's able. I believe God. How many 
and you want him to call you friend. Hallelujah. Not that you know his name, but it's good that he knows my name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Jesus. He knows my name. Defeat me, 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters. We're so grateful that you chose to virtually worship with us today. Uh, we're going to get right into the Word of God, but before we do that, if you have been blessed already by the worship that's gone forth, uh, would you type, I've been blessed? Uh, I want you to flood uh, those comments with a bunch of hearts uh, to let us know uh, that you've been blessed by the worship so far. And also, as you're hitting those hearts and you've been, you're typing that you've been blessed, I also want you uh, to... Step outside of this video real fast and share this on your Facebook page. Share this link uh, on, our, on our YouTube page. Whichever uh, way you want to do it, we encourage you to share uh, so that others can be blessed and refreshed uh, by what God is doing here at the well. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, and as you're doing that, I want you to join me in Romans chapter 13. We've been hanging out there the last uh, week or so, and I want to I wanna continue in that vein. Uh, and well, you already know uh, that uh, when God takes me to a text and won't let me leave, uh, he won't let me leave, then I want to stay there as long as God has something else to say to us today. So after you share that, find Romans chapter 13. Come on, let's go to work. Romans chapter 13, verse number 10 Verse number 10, 
Romans chapter 13, verse number 10, as, we going, as we're going there, let's bow for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you've brought us this far. Thank you for keeping us uh, during this pandemic. Thank you for keeping us, period, uh, for, through the things that we have survived. Now, God, uh, we come confessing our sins and our sinfulness, and that you cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And now, God, give us a word that challenges, that convicts, that comforts, that ultimately helps us to change. Give us that word today. I pray, continue with the psalmist, that you simply let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse number 10. Romans chapter 13, verse number 10. And it says this, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It says again, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Last week, one of la in the last few weeks, we first of all started talking about that love shouldn't hurt others. Uh, talking about how love, uh, the love we give to others, should not hurt them, harm them, or damage them. But today, I want to spin that diamond and look at it from another perspective. Instead of focusing on the fact that love shouldn't hurt others, today, I want to talk about love shouldn't hurt you. You heard me right. Love shouldn't hurt you. Would you help me preach that online? Type that and say, love shouldn't hurt me. Love shouldn't hurt me. Christian conduct, brothers and sisters, touches on every area of life. It should affect all we say and do at home and at work in our communities and even as we find ourselves by ourselves. In Romans chapter 13, Paul gives some important instructions about Christian conduct. Paul says that our Christian conduct, uh, he specifies, can be demonstrated in these two areas. Not limited to these two, but these are the two that Paul chooses to raise to our attention. Paul, first of all, says that our Christian conduct is demonstrated in how we obey and follow the rules and laws of our government as it relates to even paying taxes and even not applying for PPP loans when they don't apply to you. Uh, Paul says our Christian conduct is seen in how we respect the laws of the land. But then Paul says that our Christian conduct is demonstrated in how we love and treat each other. Paul makes it crystal clear that love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. He says we are commanded to do no evil towards the people we meet every day. That is, brothers and sisters, that sometimes Loving people can be difficult, but Paul says no matter how difficult it may be, we are commanded to do no damage or hurt to even to difficult people. Paul says do no wrong to one's neighbors. This may sound like a very simple, simple task to perform, but on a deeper reflection, you'll realize like I have to realize that loving people requires some supernatural strength. That we need some assistance from God to give us his strength that is sufficient enough to help us to love people that may be hard to love. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, we need God's strength to love people, right? We need God's assistance and help to love people people right and I want to suggest brothers and sisters that this singular verse has so many angles of approach the other week we talked about how love shouldn't hurt others and that talks about brothers and sisters simply that that the way you love people you shouldn't hurt people because oftentimes we focus 
on the, re- the receiving of hurt, but sometimes we need to take some time to assess how we may hurt others. But today, brothers and sisters, I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, and I want to talk to you because, brothers and sisters, to do your neighbor, to do no wrong or harm to your neighbor, not only applies to your neighbor, but it applies to you. That, that everything that, that, that someone does in the name of loving you, the results thereof should not be that you are harmed or damaged. To do no wrong to one's neighbor covers every word said, every action taken, every attitude expressed, and every motive that only God can see in our hearts. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters. I want to ask you this question that I only want you to answer in your heart and in your head. Have you been harmed by anyone lately? Have some word that they said, some action that they've taken, some attitude that they've expressed, or some hidden motive that's been revealed to you harmed you in any way? Because you got to understand, it's worth noting here is that not only is Jesus concerned with how how we love other people, but I want you to understand that he is as concerned with how people love us. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have a tendency to focus, to be the Christian, to be this super Christian, thinking as if it only matters how we treat people. But I want to tell you, God is as concerned with how people treat you tell you without keeping attention brothers and sisters let me say emphatically love not only should it not hurt others but it shouldn't hurt you I need somebody to talk to me today and just tap yourself at home and say love shouldn't hurt me love shouldn't harm me love should not damage me this means brothers and sisters that we need to evaluate re-evaluate the love we receive from people. Because you do know it is possible to love someone who does not know or is not willing to love you back right. This means, brothers and sisters, (laughs) that, that no matter how much you love a person, a person is still capable of harming you. That there is no amount of love that you can give. There is no amount of attention you can give to stop a person who does not value you enough not to harm you. So now we talked about your neighbor, but I want to talk about you. How does your neighbor treat you? And what is it about the relationships in your life? And let me suggest to you that this application of this message is not just dealing with romantic relationships. It also applies to platonic relationships. It, res- it not only applies to your bae, your boo, but it applies to your best friend. It applies to the, your family. It applies to any relationship you find yourself in. Love should not hurt you. I don't care how much you love God. God doesn't want you hurting. God doesn't want you crying. God doesn't want you constantly at a place of heartbreak. God is as concerned with how you treat your neighbor as well as how people treat you. You don't believe it. He says, touch not he, my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And so since love shouldn't hurt me, What are the things that this message is tailored to teach us? Number one, I believe this text is tailored to teach us this. Here's the first thing. is that love is a voluntary act. Hear me today. Love is a voluntary act. If you're taking notes, uh, the first point today that I need you to accept and help you to reevaluate, understand this, that love is a voluntary act. The love of God... Loves us unconditionally. And that same love, is this, this unconditional love is what God says our neighbors deserve from us. But also, the subtle indication of this text is that not only do our neighbors deserve this kind of love, but we deserve this kind of love. 
You got to understand that the Bible says that love does no harm. That word does there literally means to, to work, to labor. It literally means to accomplish something intentionally. In other words, what Paul is saying that love is not an involuntary act, it's voluntary. That means that in order to love someone or to be loved by someone, it has to be their choice. And already I'm talking to somebody, I hear you at home saying, Pastor, I wish you would move on from this point. But no, I'm not because some of us have a tendency to want people to do it because we want them to. Can I tell you, if love is not voluntary, if it's not on their own accord, can I tell you, it's not love. Because if you got to force them to do it, if you got to make them do it. If you got to guilt trip them into doing it, let me tell you and let me set you free today. That's not love. Because true love is a voluntary act. Love does. Love never has to be made to do. Lord, I wish I had some help right there. Love does. It can never be made to do. But if you have to force a person to love you, it's not love. Love is not something that should be forced because it does what love does. You can't love a person enough to make them to desire and decide to love you the way you need to be loved. And this is what I got to warn you about, brothers and sisters, about trying to force love out of a person who does not want to do it. The same force that you apply to make them will be the same force, if not greater force, that you have to apply to keep them loving you. And maybe that's why you're tired and drained. That's maybe that's why you feel empty inside, because all of your energy is trying to force a person to be something that they are not. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm not talking about your boo, but maybe I'm talking about some parent in your life, some child in your life that they, they made up in their mind that they're going to be one way. And you keep trying to love them and force them and, and do things. But the, the more you realize when, you re when you're forcing them to do something that they don't want to do, you're also imprisoning yourself to a person who is showing you how they really feel about you. I know it's going to be quiet. Lord, this is one of those messages uh, where I wish I could hear the silence in the room and hear the ouches and ooh, pastor, because the truth is sometimes we try to force people to be a certain way, don't we? That's why we can't find energy to pursue goals and dreams because we tired trying to force other grown people to be something that they keep telling us and showing us that they are not. I'm talking to somebody today. Somebody today needs this to set themselves free of trying to force something that God keeps showing you they're not made to give you. And maybe, just maybe, brothers and sisters, the love you keep trying to force out of them, you should give to yourself. Somebody's fainting. Somebody's, their faith and their their, their energy is fading because, and you feel faint because you keep trying to force something that is not meant to be. Don't you understand that love does? One of the inferences of that word there literally means to work. And let me tell you this and let me make no hesitation and, and take no time to tell you this. Love requires work. Love is not for the lazy or lackadaisical. It's a labor, that is, that a person has to choose to love you. But the truth is, some people don't have the energy. Some people don't have what it takes to work towards loving you. But the problem is, we keep people in our lives who never put in the work. I know y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. 
But we keep people in our lives that do not want to work. And what ends up happening, you end up working double overtime trying to make up for what they are not willing to work towards. And God keeps telling you that every time you do it, you sad, you depressed, you drain. That's simply because you keep trying to do their work. Lord, I wish somebody was in here with me, but if it, it, since it's not, would you help me preach on that and say, let them do their own work. Let them do their own work. It's not meant for you to do their work. It's not meant for you to make up the difference for them. If they're not willing to work, you need to let them wait. Because you got to understand, love requires work. And can I tell you that work should not be done out of guilt or force or it should not be done because you always have to complain and always have to tell them to respect your feelings and telling them all the stuff you try to do. I don't care how much you give to that person. I don't care how much time you try to spend with them. When a person doesn't want to work, they're not going to work. Somebody ought to tap somebody and say they're not going to work. I know that's not good gospel, but that's good grammar, but that's good gospel. They're not going to work. And stop trying to make up for what they're not willing, willing to do. First thing that this text is tailored to teach us, that love is a voluntary act. Can I give you the second thing? Here's the second thing, brothers and sisters. Here's the other thing that you need to accept is a person who cannot harm you and love you at the same time. Y'all, y'all, y'all not, y'all gonna get upset with me right here. A person cannot love you and harm you at the same time. Brothers and sisters, Paul has used that word agape. You know we've been using it for the last few weeks. It means unconditional love. And then that word harm talks about injurious, evil actions that leave a person damaged and destroyed. These words are two contradictory words. That's why Paul says love does no harm. That word no there literally is literally a barricade between the two. In other words, what Paul is showing us is that love and harm don't even belong in the same sentence. And so if Paul is saying that he, that he says love does no wrong, and he's saying that they don't belong in the same sentence, they don't belong in your life. Can I tell you, child of God, God sent me here to tell you that you cannot accept love and harm out of the same person. Here's my question. Have you been damaged lately? Has someone left you in worse shape than you were before you met them? I want you to think about that. Because if the answer to those questions are yes, then you need to reevaluate the quality, the quality of the love that they are showing you. Because what you got to understand is that you don't have to tolerate being harmed and loved at the same time. Can I tell you that nobody in your life should be able to harm you and love you at the same time. So why in the world are you accepting that? Because I know what it is because you you just heard me say love is working. You're saying, Pastor, love is hard work. But let me let me let me further clarify what I mean when I say that. When I talk about the hard work of love, it's Getting to know you, understanding your feelings, your likes, and your dislikes. It's learning to live uh, coherently with you. That's the hard work. But there's a difference between hard work and harming. That's not the hard work. That's not the hard work of a relationship. That's not a healthy relationship. But a lot of times, brothers and sisters, we convince ourselves that the harming is a part of the work. But can I tell you, if somebody constantly harms you, constantly causes you pain, and you are less of the person you were when you met them, think about it. Your friends, your family will tell you when you change because you don't even act the same. You don't even talk the same. You used to go out, used to do this and that. But since you met them now, Now you ain't got no friends. Now you can't go out. Now you don't have any good times. You smile less now. Can 
I tell you, that ain't love. You're being harmed. Because whenever a person coming into your life doesn't leave you in a better state, you are being harmed. Love shouldn't hurt you. Shouldn't feel like that. You shouldn't be crying yourself to sleep every night. I'm not saying that you're not going to go through storms, but that's not a storm. That's somebody choosing not to love you the way that you deserve. I know some of y'all looking at me like, Pastor Trey, please get off of this. I wish I could, but the Holy Spirit had me to stay here, linger here, just to let somebody know that just because they say they love you, they don't get to harm you. See, sometimes people, brothers and sisters, will convince you that you are required to tolerate their dysfunctional harm. Because they say they love you, but let me release you. The devil is a lie that if they really love you, they won't continue to harm you. So let this be the last day that you allow anybody, mother, daddy, son, or any boo or bae, to make you feel like you're obligated to stay in a relationship that's doing you more harm than love. Lord have mercy. Because the truth is sometimes, brothers and sisters, We accept harm and call it love. Sometimes we accept the harm and we call it love because we don't think we deserve any better. Uh, Somebody ought to say, teach Pastor Trey. (laughs) If you can't say teach Pastor Trey, just say ouch. (laughs) Yeah, because, because sometimes we call harming us, loving us, and God says it's time for you to refresh how you define the love that not only you give, but the love you receive. That God is trying to tell you, child of God, that you need to call it what it is. You crying more than you smiling? You miserable, don't have friends, can't, your life, you're, you're a duller, boring, more miserable person than you were before? Let's not call it love. Let's call it what it is. It's harming Harming you. But here's the other part, brothers and sisters, that gets me about this text. Because, Terrence, if, if, if we can't accept harm, being harmed in love from the same person, that may also mean and suggest to you and I that there are times that we hurt ourselves. There are times, brothers and sisters, you got to be honest with yourself and honest with me. You hurt yourself. You hurt yourself because you allowed something you should have nipped in the bud a long time ago. When you look at some of the heartbreak and some of the things that happened in your life, you you really realize that I've been harming myself. Because sometimes we harm ourselves because we don't want to accept that the person we love has no love for us. We don't want to accept people talking to my counselor recently and one of the things that he was challenging me on as it relates to my interpersonal relationship is learning to accept people for who they are. One of the hardest things for you to do is to accept that a person is not who you want them to be. And I tell you, sometimes brothers and sisters, we have this picture in our head of what we want them to be. And what messes us up, what destroys, what damages us, is when we discover that they will never be what we want them to be. I'm talking to some parent who wants their child to be something that they are not. (laughs) You're constantly breaking your heart, but the truth is you got to learn how to meet them where they are. And you're going to kill yourself trying to make them something that they're not. I'm not saying stop praying. I'm saying that stop trying to change people. <laughs> That's what kills us. Now understand, I'm not saying don't pray for your child if, if they're, they're out there. I'm saying you got to release yourself from the responsibility that it's your fault and you got to change them. No, you got to accept them for who they are, love them, and pray that God covers them. 
Maybe I'm talking to somebody who you keep trying to say, I'm going to pray this spirit out of him or her. I don't care how hard you pray, how much you fast. No amount of praying, no amount of fasting will change the wrong person into the right person. Love shouldn't hurt, but love often does hurt when we are loving the wrong person, doesn't it? That's, that's what happened. Most of us be, ought to be able to thank God for letting us love the wrong person because loving the wrong person taught you how to recognize the right one. Some of us owe God a praise because you, you ran into some heartbreak, you ran into some issues with people, and the truth is you owe God a praise because he let you love the wrong one so he can show you who the right one may be. Somebody saying to me, Pastor Trey, I got you. This is a hard message, but, uh, but you're telling me I can't accept it. No, you can't accept it because love shouldn't hurt like this. Love shouldn't harm you. Love shouldn't leave you damaged. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God sent me here on assignment this morning to, to say to somebody, you know what? There's some relationships in your life you need to reevaluate. And maybe, just maybe, it's not for God to tell you to cut them off, but, also, but maybe you need to cut them back. Maybe you need to put some distance in between you because they are so keenly focused on harming you. You do know there are people who are wired so in such a way, they call them narcissists. And what these people do, they thrive on harming you because for some people the only way they can love you is when they can control you (laughs) some people can only love you when they are harming you when they feel like they're empowered enough to do the things that they want to do there are some people brothers and sisters who can convince you that it's love but don't you allow them no amount of manipulation to make you feel like that harming you hurting you damaging you is love. That ain't a part of loving somebody. That's called being toxic. You aren't required to take being harmed and damaged because somebody says they love you. The devil is a lie. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be by myself if I got to be miserable. I would rather be by myself if if I got to be harmed and damaged and depressed. God says, no, 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 no. That ain't love. That's being, you're being harmed, not loved. But you, God says, you deserve love. Somebody ought to type with this with me and say, I deserve love. I deserve love. Here, here, here's, here's how I close it. Here's the question. <sighs> what do you do, Herb? How, what do you do when, when, when ah, I feel this in my spirit? What, what do you do when you've been damaged by someone? What do you do when you have been in some parent relationship, some parental relationship, some child relationship, or some bay or boo relationship, or some friend relationship, and they've left you damaged? You know, the word damaged there literally means to not be in the same state. That literally means that you went from being fully functional to now you're barely functional. I tell you, it doesn't make you a Christian to stay in something that's killing you. It's not biblical for you to be miserable. Let me say that again. It's not biblical for you to be miserable. Now, I wish I, wish, I, wish I could lie to you as some people of former generations, but can I tell you, as your pastor, let me readily say this, that God doesn't want you miserable. I never said uncomfortable. Miserable. That is, every single day you mad, you sad, you depressed. God don't want you like this. He said, I've given you life and life more abundantly. God doesn't want you miserable. And so if you continue to be miserable, if you're crying every night, God says, that ain't it. I wish somebody could help me preach this and say, that ain't it. That that, that ain't it. God says, listen, I'm not going to tell you to stay anywhere where you're constantly miserable, lesser of the person. Don't you understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? God made you priceless, but you keep dumbing yourself down and discounting yourself just so you can have somebody in your life. 
because you're afraid to be by yourself. God says, no, I don't want you living in fear because some of us are in relationships not because we're in love, we're in fear. Hey! We in fear of being by ourselves. Oh, y'all saying, Pastor Trey, please go ahead and close the message. I will. <laughs> here's, here's what I got to tell you, y'all. When you are in that place where you're damaged, there's two things you need to do. I'll close like this. You got to learn to leave people in God's hands. You cannot force them to change. You cannot pray or fast enough to get them to change. Some people have to learn, you have to learn to leave in God's hands because as long as you leave it in your hands, you are harming yourself. As long as you keep trying to fix them and make them and force them, God says that's what's causing the harm. You keep trying to do stuff with your hands. Some people, you got to learn to leave in God's hands. Some of your, um, let me talk to some parent who needs to leave their child in God's hand. I know you did the best you could with them, but as much as you did, they chose their own route. And as much as you love them, hear me, you got to leave some people, even your child, in his hand. Maybe somebody has a broken relationship with a parent and you were trying to fix it, trying to make it right because you want them in your life. God told me to tell you as much as you want them to love you and as much as you love them, you got to leave some people in his hand. I know they're your friends for years. I know y'all been bosom buddies. I know y'all been rocking since high school. But if they continue to do things that sabotage you and your happiness and your peace, you got to learn to leave people in God's hand. I know you've been with them for a while. And that were good seasons. <laughs> but now the majority of them are crying, weeping. And you're constantly quoting to yourself, weeping may endure for a night. Notice what that text says. It wasn't even in my notes. It says may endure. He never said have to endure. Which simply means that you don't have to cry all the time. You're not meant to cry all night. There is a morning that God wants you to live in. You got to leave some people in his hand. But then here's the last thing, and I'll close like this. Not only must you learn to leave people in God's hands, but, but the second and final thing, you got to learn to let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Because the longer you hold on, the more it's going to harm you. The longer you hold on, the more you're going to be hurt and damaged. I'm not saying as a parent that you shall let go of your child, but some of us hold on so tightly that we don't give God space to work out things in our child's life. You don't believe me? Look at the story of the prodigal son. Father loved his son just like we love our children, don't we? He loved his son so much that when his son wanted to leave, he let him go. And he realized that the son, there's some lessons that he can't learn at his daddy's house. He's got to learn on his own. And when he learned, oh, Lord have mercy, on his own, the Bible says he came to himself. He learned the lesson that his daddy was trying to teach. He learned the lesson that he didn't or refused to learn at home. And the Bible says he came back home. You've got to learn to let them go. That mean you don't love them. Don't mean that you don't love them anymore. It just means that you no longer hold yourself responsible for their actions. God says, let them go. I know you want them to be different. I know you want them to love you better. But God told me to tell you, they ain't loving you better. And you got to learn how to let them go. Love shouldn't hurt you. It shouldn't hurt you. If you receive that word, I want you to type, I receive that word. Listen, on the heels of a challenging message like this, 
I hate and love preaching stuff like this. I hate it because it usually challenges us to reevaluate because it's easy to shout for a message that you can uh, just shout for in the sanctuary, but messages like this challenge how we live. More, more succinctly, it challenges how people love us. Let me tell you this, let me tell you this. God does not want you miserable. That's not the plan of God. Now, sometimes he he requires for us to be uncomfortable. Sometimes he requires for us to be in a place where things are frustrating. I'm not saying God don't want you frustrated. Yes, sometimes he does. But you shouldn't be, that frustration shouldn't require for you to be miserable every day. You ain't smiled in three weeks? Huh? And let me also say this. Lord, I thank you, God. If their love can be turned off, it was never on. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. If their love was turn, can be turned off towards you, it was never on in the first place. Because true love can't be turned off. You hear me today? So if it just seemed to be turned off, it was never on. Release yourself from accepting this toxic, I call it toxic love because it poisons you, it changes you, it lets you mutate into this dysfunctional person. You don't have to accept being harmed to be loved. That's what I want you to hear. Listen, today I want you to reflect, this is a message that we need to reflect on. As we're going into the summer, I want you to reflect and evaluate, reevaluate the love that you receive. Yeah, we, we've been challenged about how the love we give, but God is as concerned with the love we allow ourselves to receive from people. You're not more spiritual. Your relationship is not more spiritual because you can make it through being harmed. No, that ain't spiritual. That ain't God. That's not, that's not being a Christian. That's not obeying what the Bible says. If you are being harmed in your relationship, your marriage, or any friendship, whatever it is, if you're being harmed constantly, you need to reevaluate where you are and who they are and who you want them to be in your life. Because love shouldn't hurt you. I want you to reflect today. Take some of my time. Every week I tell you, pray, pray this prayer, three quick things. First of all, God, show me how this message applies to me. Secondly, help me to store this word in my heart so that I can use it again one day. And thirdly, help me to share this with somebody. Those three things. Help me to show me, store it, help me to share it. Let's pray. Let's pray. I want you to bow your heads. Give you a moment to pray that prayer and ask God to show you. Go ahead and pray, church. I want you to pray. This is a sensitive message, sensitive word that should challenge us today. Challenge us to reevaluate some things. I'm free. That's where I want to go. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains. Holding me, my soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Said, so Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story is, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at bad things, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. I'm free. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and pray. Praise the Lord. God wants you to be free. I'm free. Said so longer, no longer bound. Yeah. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. <laughs> It's just a blessing. Oh, oh, oh. said so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah. Somebody all at home, all lift your hand and say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants you to be free. Said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, I pray for somebody today who's been stuck in some parental relationship, some child and parent relationship, some friendship, some romantic relationship that keeps harming them. God, help them to leave them in your hands and help them to let go. Thank you for challenging us today that not only does love shouldn't hurt others, but it shouldn't hurt us. Thank you that you're not just concerned with how we love others, but you're concerned with how others love us as well. I pray that you allow this word to be stored in our hearts, and God, help us to share this message, encourage somebody to tell somebody that love shouldn't hurt you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, family, amen. If you were blessed today, go ahead and type, I was blessed. I was blessed. Listen, as you're typing that, we're going to get ready to give now. We're going to get ready to give now. I'm sorry, before we give, let me, let, me, let me see if somebody needs to join a church. Listen, I would love to be your pastor, my church. We would love to be your church. I promise you, there is no place like the well. We would love to be your family. If you need a church home today, I want you to say, I need a church home. If you need to be saved today, I want you to say, I want to be saved. Type that out. We have members and leaders that are standing by to meet your needs. Listen, go ahead and do that now. If you want to be saved, you need a church home, you would love for the well to be the place where you worship. Listen, there is no place like the well. I promise you, you're not going to find a better church. I promise you. The well is one of the best places to worship. We would love to be your church family. We would love to, for you to be saved. Amen. Come on. Come on. Just type that out now. Type that out now. Type that out now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm free, free, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord, oh, 
I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to leave it alone, y'all. Hallelujah. I'm free. Somebody say, well, Pastor Trey, you in there with a couple of other people. How are you still getting happy? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah. Listen, if you were blessed today, type that in. You were blessed. You were blessed. Blessed. Listen, we're going to get ready to give before we go. Uh, listen, there are four unique ways you can give here at the well. Uh, you can give through our P.O. box. That number is at that, that information is at the bottom of your screen. You can give through text to give. That number is at the bottom of your screen. You can give on the Givelify app, which can be found at the App Store as well on Google Play. Uh, you can also give securely on our website at thewellmobile.org. But whichever way you choose to give, you can give today. I encourage you. I encourage you, family, to give uh, as God so liberally loves you, we ought to liberally give to him. I want to thank you for how you have continued to give throughout this pandemic. I want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in your giving, as I believe God has some great things in store for us. Amen. Listen, family, we got to get ready to go. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I hope you were blessed today. And as always, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. See you when we see you. Peace.